Aloha and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. I am your host, Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association. And I'd like to introduce our Executive Assistant, Siobhan Garcia. Hi, Siobhan. Hi, Cheryl. Thank you. Yes, today I wanted to um, introduce our guest. We have Raymond Orozco, who is the Vice President of Sales at Triple F. Welcome, Raymond. We're excited to have you. Aloha. Thank you for having me today. So today we'll be hearing from Raymond, who is represented by uh, representing Triple F, a distributor, and how challenging the current supply chain disruption is and how it's impacting our healthcare facilities, our schools, our military, and anyone in the food service industry. So first of all, I wanted to have Ray tell us a little bit about the company Triple F. Okay, so um, Triple F is, we feel we're one of the uh, largest distributors of uh, paper goods, uh, non-alcoholic bar supplies, janitorial products, and uh, healthcare uh, products. Uh, I've been here at Triple F for 21 years already. Um, mostly we're working in the purchasing department, but now I do uh, business development and uh, take care of some, some of the suppliers and the also uh, uh, try to lead the sales team into uh, giving ideas to, to share with the customers that, that we sell to. Um, right now, it's, uh, it's been a tough time for the last, since this pandemic started about getting supplies into the, into the islands. And we just hope that uh, it'll clear up within the next, we're being told it's gonna clear up in the next year. So hopefully we'll have some better answers for everybody. Hey, did you just say one year? <laughs> uh, that's what we're being told. Most of our vendors are telling us now, at least some of the products, at least one year. So uh, to the end of uh, 2020, 2022 now. Wow. So Siobhan, why don't you go first and, and ask the questions to Ray that you have, and then I'll take it from there. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Raymond, you know, for all of the viewers who are unaware of what Bill 40 is, and um, maybe what, you know, why we would be asking for an exemption. Can you explain um, a little bit more on this and the reasons why we might be asking for this? Okay, well, Bill 40 is a uh, bill that was introduced uh, 2021, basically, to uh, ban the sale of uh, foam products, uh, polypropylene material, uh, plastic, some plastic bags, and uh, polystyrene material. So this basically all this product is it's a one-time use item and it's going into the waste of uh, into our landfill and they we really want to uh, eliminate that. Um, it's uh, it's going to be it's it's to, the bill is uh, going into a new item. <clears throat> Most of the items are now called the gas or PLA, which is really hard time to get right now uh, because of the. Um, the everybody's going into this new thing uh, the, and on the mainland and also uh, the foreign countries are using this product a lot more now. So that just means that it's that much harder for us to get these products. Is that part of why we're asking for an exemption? Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, right now it's, uh, we're being told some of our, uh, for our purchase orders have been in since uh, early June. And we're not going to see some of the product. It's almost, it's almost taken one year to get some of the product that we're uh, ordering. Wow! So I can't imagine what do some of these um, companies do? You know, if they're waiting on a back order. Um, we are trying to sub what we have existing product right now. Um, <clears throat> you're trying to sub something else differently for the for the product that uh, is short. Uh, you're just trying to go to different manufacturers. Uh, we're we're using a private. We probably added on like seven more new uh, vendors this year, which we never had before. Usually, we just try to keep with two or three, but uh, we're just trying to get product into the islands to to make sure that the restaurants can survive. To the, serve their, especially for the takeout restaurants, they need to do that. So, so would you say then <clears throat> that means because there's such a back order on some of these other items that. Um, maybe ones that are not, or they're part of the Bill 40, they're easier to get, and therefore 
still having to bring them in to use those as a um, sub? Well, some of them aren't easy to get at all, even the uh, ones that, <clears throat> that we can use right now that aren't going to be bad for Bill 40. Um, those, um, we've, we're, the lead time that you have to get right now is like a six month lead time to get your orders and to get product on, onto the island itself. Uh, it's not just the material, it's packing, packaging, it'll be the, the boxes for the material. Uh, the shipping lanes are just uh, really, that's what's really causing the problem right now, the shipping lanes. You just, there's so many containers out there with product that want to, that people want to ship. Uh, there's no room for it. To, there's no room on the container ships to bring it in. And so the exemption that, um, you know, not only our industry, but many other industries are um, asking for, um, how much of an exemption is, you know, do you feel is a good, amount of time and can you explain a little bit more of what that exemption would mean okay what we <clears throat> what we would like to get is at least a one-year exemption it's not possible to uh it's because of the material that you cannot get right now um and some of the material that we feel that is reusable uh the the, the harder polypropylene containers which is basically a two-piece container it's uh, very thick it's almost like a tupperware item that you could reuse Mm -hmm. And so um, we want to make sure that the state will let us, the city, I should say the counties, let us use that product. And to uh, think about it, uh, it's not going to be going into the waste as much as they think it is as a disposable item. And for the exemption, when would people know if um, they, you know, we did get this and um, if we didn't, what are the ramifications of it? Uh, uh, each, I said each county is different right now, especially on Oahu. Um, we've been working with the environmental services. Uh, we just we just found out today that there is an extension for another month till the end of uh, to the middle of January, I should say. Uh, but that's not going to do much uh, because it's, by the time you use your product, it's gonna it's gonna be. I should say inventory wise, we're, we have more product than what we have because also too, the restaurants have been slow. You know, there's a lot of restaurants who have inventory, your, your, um, the numbers that you produce right now in the restaurants, they're not, they're not there yet. You know, the, the, what you serve, you know, ever since pandemic, you know, your restaurants are probably down maybe 50, 60%, some of them on, on, uh, on doing uh, takeout, you know, especially the takeouts. Um, we're asking uh, at least for a year extension, at least to the end of the year. I, I feel it's going to be at least one year until we get really fully recovered. Because what it is, you can get some of the products sometimes. Like I, I can get order today, but I might not be able to get another order for four more months. And to have inventory that long, it's not it's not feasible at all. And when will um, what or when will be expected to find out if this was? Uh, that's up to the mayor to sign the bill, you know, to get the extension. And we just hope that uh, Mayor Blangiardi uh, will sign the extension, that he sees how what's it's coming from all the distributors and even from the restaurants themselves, that it's, it's not feasible to have this implemented so fast. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's a, <laughs> it's really hard to ask, so, you know, not only the restaurants, but like we said, all the other businesses that this affects, like, Cheryl was saying, you know, hospitals and, and our um, military bases and everybody, you know, it's kind of hard for them, ask them to sit and wait, but I guess that's all we can do at this point. So, you know, thank you for explaining um, this and how it's all going to work and what to, um, what's to come. Thank you. Back to you, Cheryl. Thanks, Siobhan. So Ray, so, you know, the burning question is, how did this all, why, why did this happen? So I'm assuming that there is no product. So is it the plastics that there's no? Um, there is some plastic material out there, not a lot, um, but also uh, due to labor shortages, uh, you know, the pandemic has just put all these, especially we, because we import so much product into the, into the US, uh, all your countries, your, the Vietnams, the Chinas, the uh, Taiwan, they all have labor shortages right now. So you can't, they don't have, there's nothing produced. They might have their, I said, they might have the product, but there's no labor to produce these items uh, at all. 
And I said, once they get the items, it's just there's no containers to have their product shipped over to the US at all. And I think everybody's seen that if they look at the news of all the uh, container ships out of California uh, that, that are just uh, sitting out there and not being unloaded. You deal with this every day, Ray, as you, like you were mentioning earlier, um, before this call, you know, it's not only plastics, but it's also other type of paper goods that you're also having a challenge getting. Do you want to talk about a little bit about that too? Because it's the whole supply chain that has been disrupted due to the pandemic. Yes, yes, it is. Um, we're being told, especially uh, if you go to the, you know, your Sam's Club, your Costco's, they're always out of toilet paper. It's, you know, it's not that everybody says they're hoarding not a lot of people aren't hoarding it's just that the supply that they're even getting that we're getting from the manufacturers uh that there's there's no product at all um it takes um the shortage for you know pulp it, you know it, it goes down the whole chain yeah, how to produce the items from uh the pulp getting to the manufacturer uh, and all the other components that go to um, your your boxes uh, companies are running out of ink to, to print on, you know, there's a, it's just a, it's a really bad supply chain uh, disruption and it's going to last, you know, um, maybe, in, like I said, uh, to the end of the year, we've been told some of this is going to be to the end of the year. And like you, you just mentioned, it's also the cost. You know, I've been getting reports from restaurateurs, the cost of products. Hold on, I'm so sorry, someone's knocking on my wall. The cost of products like chicken, beef, um, just in general food costs are going up from 15 to 25%. So what kind of cost do you see going up on the products um, that we're talking about? We've had at least 60% in, 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 if not more, 60% in cost from last year, 2020, to the start of this year, almost, if not more, six, more than 60% in cost of goods. And a lot of it's due to uh, shipping, uh, petroleum prices, uh, the, the driver shortage on the mainland, there's no drivers that are uh, want to transport the, the product from here to there. Uh, the trucking industry is really suffering right now. And that sort of also affects us. So what we want to do is give you an opportunity, Ray, to, to give any suggestions or any kind of comments. Um, well, I, I would hope that um, the mayor really looks at into this and uh, any of the city, the city, uh, the city council can look at this, uh, that it's really not feasible to do this, uh, to bill at all. Um, it'll help everybody uh, in the industry. Um, it'll keep the mom and pops in, in, in uh, going because they had to suffer with these costs. Uh, if you go to look at it, get try to buy a plate lunch nowadays, it's minimum is going to be $10. Something that cost you $4 last year is up to $10. So that tells you that's a 60% increase uh, of, of your cost of goods. Like I said, not only does it affect the paper goods, but also affects the food cost also. And so we hope that um, they'll see that, that it is affecting everybody. It's a total industry uh, in, the, in the hospitality industry that's being affected by this. So, you know, I, have, I do have a quick question, Raymond. Is yes. there something that um, people can do? Like, I know you were saying, um, you know, we're really reaching out to the mayor and everybody, but is there something that you can suggest to, whether it's restaurants or the other, you know, vendors and suppliers, is there something that they can do to help? Um, just communicate with, you know, with your representative and try to get, uh, well, we sent a lot of letters to uh, one of the groups that uh, shows introduces the HFIA. Uh, they have a lot of letters from our vendors that we've been getting about the uh, shortage of the uh, of getting products and also their, their, their supply chain. Uh, and they're also giving us letters on what material we can use that is still good, uh, that shouldn't be banned for Bill 40. Exactly, Ray. One of the requests that we have to any of the manufacturers, it's specifically a, a manufacturer representative letter saying the, the concern that they have, the issues that they're having, the challenges that they're having, and these letters are all being compiled and then submitted to the city. So now that we've handled a little bit about Bill 40 and Oahu, which is Oahu's Bill 40, Maui has Bill 52. 
Yeah, uh, Bill 52 is a little bit different than Bill 40 on our Oahu. Um, it'd be nice if the, all the counties got together and use the same product. Uh, I should say, you know, what, what can be used on what island and what can be used on island, especially for, we have five uh, distribution centers throughout the islands. And so on Maui, we had to buy a different lid, coffee lid for uh, our customers out there. And also on Maui, they can use, uh, they cannot use a wax line cup, but on Oahu we can. So it's kind of, it's hard, the disruption, how you're gonna order uh, from your vendors. Um, some customers can do a custom print because the, the band is, uh, on Oahu you can use it, but on Maui you cannot use it. So everybody's having a problem. I, you know, this, this is the big companies, the, uh, the chains that they cannot, sell. they have to, to do, do different demands and it's, it's, it's pressure, it's a, a burden on them and it, it, it costs more to, to do something different on Maui, you know. Exactly. If you have a restaurant that is on Oahu and then you have a, a restaurant that's on Maui and not even restaurants, you have a coffee shop, you have a bakery, like you mentioned, exactly. right? Everybody has to follow all the different um, guidelines of each island. And so for Triple F, you know, you folks also have to keep it straight. So you be sure that you, you know, let your customer know, oh, no, no, you know, unfortunately you can do that for Oahu, but you can't do that on Maui. Yes. And that's part of the service that Triple F provides. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're just hoping that, um, that a lot of the restaurants, they have to apply for the exemptions. You know, it's a lot of paperwork that people have to do on a Maui, especially they want to do what like, uh, it's like the green placard that we do here for the Department of Health. Well, they had to put a placard on their window that they're compliant with uh, their Bill 52 ban. So um, <laughs> they, uh, they can use a, say for luau's, a food tray. Um, the one they can use cannot be wax line, but we can't do it on Oahu. But it just affects the quality of what you're serving to out there in the food industry, you know, um, yeah, liquid, liquid items. It's, you cannot put into a, a paper product that is going to be soluble. Uh, it's not giving the right uh, presentation, you know, especially from chefs. It's not giving the right presentation to the product. So it, it does affect them, you know, and they just have to be compliant, you know. Um, we feel that a, a lot of the the retail, uh, the, the supermarkets, they're going to get, uh, get away with this uh, because they bring all this prepared food in and they can sell it in any kind of container where if you manufacture on either Oahu or Maui, you have to be really uh, diligent on what you're going to serve it in. You have to really be uh, trying to, I would say, uh, try to be compliant with that bill. I, you, I can't imagine what you guys and a lot of your sales must have to go through in trying to stay um, current on what all the different situations are and, you know, really informing your um, clients, you know, that must be difficult. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's that, that's, that's, you just hit on the nail that um, the salespeople really have to know how to communicate with the chefs or whoever the owner of the restaurant is on what products are uh, viable to use and mm -hmm. what, if it's going to work for them too. So you, you they just changed the whole concept of how they are going to serve uh, their food in. Yeah, and well, and I like you were saying, you know, they have to be um, they have to be knowledgeable in so many different areas because it, you know, like you said, Maui is totally different than Oahu, and you know, to be able to sub things out will be totally different. And I'm sure you guys have fairly large clients too who really rely on you guys to be um, that person who knows what is happening on every island, you know, so uh, my hat's off to you guys. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's just education for all of us, you know, I mean, um, our sales staff really has to work right now. And, you know, it's kind of a hard time during the holidays. Uh, you know, some people still don't want to see, you know, some people don't, don't want to see in person people. Uh, so you it's showing the product on on, on the line or um, dropping it off, and so they got to you know just a drop off. And so you got to get an answer back from them instead of just getting an answer now. It's going to take a while to get an answer if that product is going to be viable for them to use. 
Um, now, something you mentioned a little bit earlier um, was, you know, I, I think it was, can't remember how early on we talked about it, but, you know, because a lot of the restaurants had a dip in their sales and were a lot slower than um, they were in previous years, um, I would assume that they have some sort of supply of things that might be on this Bill 40. Uh, what, what do you suggest to those clients of yours that say, hey, I'm sitting on stock that I cannot use? Well, we feel that um, the environmental services uh, will give them an exemption you know, to, to, use, uh, uh, to use the product up. But um, what they do want from us, uh, from the distributors, is a timeline of when we should be able to get product in, into, the, into the state you know, so for what they're doing. Um, so you're, some of it's six months from now. And we, you know, so uh, with Maui especially, they want you to get that timeline if it's June, then that that's the data beyond. Uh, that's the date you can uh, sell up to that. You know, the product is not uh, feasible for Bill Fifty Two. I should say, you know, that's mm -hmm. going to be compliant. Um, and one of a, we were on a, a Zoom call last week with this uh, city of Maui, uh, the county of Maui, and they were talking about, okay, what if I have a product that's uh, not compliant, but a, another vendor does? Well, who does that restaurant going to buy from? You know, we have a lower cost, but they have a higher cost, and they're trying to be compliant. And we just have we have we have excess inventory that we could sell to them. It's not fair to some of the distributors. You know, we that's what we feel each with each other. You know, because we might have product this month, well, we might not have it two months down the road, but they have it. So it's going to be confusing for customers who to buy from. You know, they're they're going to have to okay today. Triple F has it, so and so doesn't have it today. So uh, it, it's going to be hard, you know. And that's hard for your guys' business, right? Um, to be able to project, you know, if, oh, if of course it is, yeah. And, and we're getting that right now, you know, some of the uh, we were trying to be compliant for January first, but now they keep signing these extensions. Okay, it's going to take us two to three weeks, maybe at least minimum three weeks to get the product in, you know, that we can be able to sell again. And so what we're taking, you know, you take a chance of having overstock inventory, you're, you're, you know, you're duplicating and sometimes even triplicating the inventories because you, you had to try to get product in here and you wanted, you might have to get it from three different manufacturers. And so you might get a hundred cases from that one, 200 cases from this one and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's a lot of inventory that you had to have on hand to, to make sure that you can supply your customers. You know, Ray, I wanted to also um, showcase and have our viewers here. Not only are the schools, the military bases, our, our um, healthcare facilities um, suffering with the supply chain disruption, but it's also distributors such as yourself and the manufacturers. So as you just said, right, it's, it's where you have a limited amount of space in your warehouse, you know, you probably have products that you probably are sitting on that you would love to move, right? Because that's the model yes. of what yes. you do, right? And, and if you don't move them, and then all of a sudden, then Bill 40 or, or Bill 52, right, then you've got all this inventory. Yeah, that's what's happening now. So we're, you know, we're, trying to, you know, it's end of the year. So we are trying to get do both. We're trying to uh, eliminate product that's not going to be uh, compliant for Bill 40. And so we're trying to have some uh, good sales on it right now, you know, our excess inventory. Um, and even the new product that we're trying to get in, it's not coming yet. You know, it's so uh, we're stuck in a hard place right now. We're short on some products. So, uh, you know, the other distributors are going to get the business right now. So, you know, it's, sales guys suffer, you know, because it's a loss of income for them because there's no product to sell. Um, you know, and eventually the, the cost of the goods uh, for them, everybody thinks that the cost of goods, the, the new products, the PLA, the, the big gas are just a small, like a 2%, 3% increase. And that was told them when the bill 40 first came out. It's not, it's, it's a, if you look at the total package, the containers, the, the cutlery, the serving utensils, the bags that you have to serve it now in, 
uh, it's about a 30, 40% cost at, to the end user. So if your plate lunch costs you only say $1.50 to serve uh, just the raw material, now it's up to $3. So it, uh, it's going to be a, uh, it's hard for the customer to swallow that, I think. Totally agree with you because, you know, as restaurateurs and business people, we try to keep the cost down because we, you know, we understand that, right? It's sheer economics. And sometimes your hand is forced that you have to increase some of your, your products, your plate lunches or your meals due to the increase on whether it's your protein or whether it's your takeout goods, you know, whatever it is, right? Because like anything else, we're all in it right, to support each other. So Raymond, before we close, do you have any other closing statements? And then I'll do a closing statement. Well, um, my, my thing on this, all of, everybody wants to be uh, compliant, especially the distributors. We wanna be compliant to the new rules, but in the long run, I think we just have to look at it to where, let's think of it as, uh, we can't get the product, that's the main thing. So let's try to be resourceful of what we can do correctly, you know? And we can, and everybody can live, uh, save money. You know, you'll save money to your customers, so you don't have to uh, have the exorbitant prices uh, of for the new material that's going to be coming in the big gas and the PLAs. Uh, so many of these restaurants, uh, bubble tea shops. There's right now, there's no material that they can use that's going to be feasible for 2022. Uh, the, I know a lot of them had the lidding film. I don't know if you had the lidding film for your uh, boba drinks. That's not going to be uh, okay for 2022. So they're going to suffer. A lot of customers are going to suffer uh, how they're going to do their, their things. The cost of goods, I said, are going to be so much more uh, for them. Thank so we you. Just hope, we just yeah. hope that they, uh, they can uh, extend the bill for us. That, exactly. Thank you, Ray. Thank you so much for taking the time and jumping on with us today. And as you said, you know, we all want to do what's right. We, I'm a third generation here. I have grandchildren. So we want to do what's right for our islands and to keep Hawaii paradise. And yet, as this pandemic rages and still we have challenges with our supply chain, thank you for bringing um, everything to light to share with our viewers what this disruption has done, not only for the manufacturers, for the distributors and suppliers, and also for the nursing homes, the healthcare facilities, our Department of Education and our schools, and of course, our whole food service industry, because it impacts everybody. And as I mentioned, always, this is the Hawaii Restaurant Association. We are the voice of Hawaii's food service and restaurant industry. And again, thank you everyone for joining. We look forward to dining together again. Thanks. All right, thanks, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.